America has a number of vital interests in Iraq, two of which are most germane to this discussion. One is continuing the defeat of al-Qaeda in Iraq, which is now underway, which I will discuss. And the other is to prevent Iran from radicalizing the Shia and working to further destabilize the Middle East, which my colleague Ruel Garek will discuss. There has been uh, controversy about whether al-Qaeda in Iraq is related to the larger al-Qaeda movement. Uh, I think that this controversy is in fact unjustified. Al-Qaeda in Iraq is very clearly tied in to the global al-Qaeda movement. Its leaders, who are predominantly foreign, have interacted uh, directly in debates about strategy and tactics with the al-Qaeda central leaders uh, now in Pakistan. Al-Qaeda in Iraq receives significant uh, resources from the global al-Qaeda movement, principally uh, foreign fighters who comprise still about 80% of the suicide bombers in Iraq. And al-Qaeda in Iraq has, has frequently identified its objectives in precisely the same terms as the global <coughs> al-Qaeda movement, and it has used Iraq in the past as a base for attacks uh, against Jordan, and has indicated its desire to use Iraq as a base for attacks throughout the region. Its continued existence in Iraq, if it were not checked, would pose a grave danger to American interests throughout the region, and ultimately, I believe, throughout the world. And it is absolutely vital that the United States uh, continue to confront al-Qaeda in Iraq, which is something that can only be done, not only with troops continuing to be in Iraq, but pursuing something like the strategy that is currently underway. This has also been a controversial issue. And there are many, many people who explain that they would like to fight al-Qaeda globally, but that they do not think we should be fighting al-Qaeda in Iraq, or that we could be fighting al-Qaeda in Iraq without the presence of American ground forces conducting counterinsurgency operations. Neither statement is true. The global al-Qaeda movement has also indicated <laughs> that it regards Iraq as the central front in the war on terror, that it places great stake, excuse me, in their war on us, I should say, that it places great stake in success in Iraq, that it would regard a defeat in Iraq as an enormous setback, and that it would take advantage of any, any perceived victory in Iraq. In Iraq itself, there has been an effort to explain that we should fight terrorism without engaging in sectarian conflict, without being drawn into a civil war. This is a misunderstanding of the nature of the terrorist problem in Iraq. It is actually impossible to disaggregate the problem of fighting al-Qaeda in Iraq from the sectarian violence, which al-Qaeda in Iraq deliberately sparked beginning in 2003 and 2004, working up to the destruction of the al Asqadiyya Mosque in February 2006, intentionally trying to provoke sectarian strife, which has been an essential component of al-Qaeda strategy for embedding itself in the Iraqi population. If we simply were to withdraw and allow the sectarian strife to continue in Iraq unabated, we would be furthering the objectives of the al-Qaeda leaders who use that terrorism both to pose as protectors of the Sunni population against Shia death squads and also as a cover for their own violence against the Sunni. And this has been one of the things that we've seen most dramatically in the process of beginning the defeat of al-Qaeda. It is true that the Sunni population, the Sunni leadership in Al-Anbar province expressed a desire to turn against al-Qaeda in 2006. It is also true that it was not able to do so until American forces in Al-Anbar province were augmented, adopted a new strategy, and were ex uh, executing a strategy that was being supported throughout Iraq. Interestingly, as American forces in Iraq have moved into areas that had been Al-Qaeda strongholds and asked for the support of the locals against Al-Qaeda, the first question that they are often asked is, are you going to stay this time and protect us? If the answer to that question is yes, as it has been recently, then it has been possible for us to gain tremendous support from the local population and protect them as they turn against the terrorists and do in fact become some of our most effective allies in the war on terror. If the answer to that question becomes no, we will abandon you to the not so tender mercies of Al-Qaeda, to their vengeance, to their retribution, then we will find that support for counterterrorism activities in Iraq will dry up and the movements that have led us so far along the path toward defeating Al-Qaeda in Iraq will stop. 